When it comes to dinosaurs, we must be realistic. Steven Spielberg and Jurassic Park have been lying to us for years. But don't worry, here I'm going to fix 10 Inaccuracies in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World Number 1. It should never have been named Jurassic Park Ouch! You know this video will hurt when the first big mistake in Jurassic Park is its name. What a disaster! The Jurassic period took place 201 million to 145 million years ago. And you know what? Neither Tyrannosaurus, nor Triceratops, nor Velociraptor existed yet because they all lived in the Cretaceous. While some dinosaurs that were ancestors of the animals displayed in the movie lived during the Jurassic period, these ones looked very different and were too small. Therefore, if we take into account only the dinosaurs in the park, the place should be named Cretaceous Park instead. Hold on a second. That's a horrible name. I wouldn't sell anything with it. Gah! And that was exactly what Michael Crichton believed. He wrote the novel the movie is based on. Though it seems that the saga wanted to redeem itself by giving the following title to the Netflix animated series, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Well, at least that's something. Number 2. A Poisonous Dinosaur Without Poison? The death of the greedy Dennis Nedry caused by Dilophosaurus could have been the most satisfactory in the saga, but there's a problem. The real Dilophosaurus doesn't look anything like the one in the movie. In Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, this dinosaur was portrayed as a poison-spitting, small carnivorous animal with neck frills and a person's size. And no wonder you're extinct. That's how you picture a Dilophosaurus, right? Well, you've been fooled. The actual Dilophosaurus was huge, 8 feet tall and 23 feet long. It had strong jaws and it did have frills, but those were two small head crests. And just to top it all off, there's no scientific evidence about the poison. In a nutshell, the poisonous Dilophosaurus from the movies never existed. I'm sorry. Number 3. An Impossible Cloning Method if you happen to hope scientists clone dinosaurs like in Jurassic Park, well, hope is the last thing ever lost. Let's break it down. First off, DNA has an expiration date, which is 10,000 years in regular conditions at the most and up to 6.8 million years in perfect conditions at 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Either way, dinosaurs became extinct long before that. However, if we were able to extract DNA from a dinosaur, the cloning procedure would still be unfeasible because the entire genome is needed and the only thing that we would get is fragmented DNA. So we wouldn't know how to put the pieces back together or what are the missing ones. Plus, Jurassic Park sets out that DNA must be recovered from insects caught in amber. Um, the way I see it, it's clear that this is an impossible mm. procedure. Number 4. The real Velociraptor wasn't that scary In the Jurassic Saga, Velociraptor is the scariest dinosaur because, unlike T-Rex, it was able to chase you down corridors and open doors. But did you know that the real Velociraptor was a poodle size? Even a pit bull could beat it up. Actually, the dinosaurs in the movie are more like Deinonychus, which is related to the real Velociraptor and was 10 feet long. However, both the film and novel wanted the public to remember the names, and Velociraptor, as well as Jurassic Park, are catchy names. In addition to this, Michael Crichton based his novel on the book Predatory Dinosaurs of the World, and the paleontologist said inaccurately in his book that the name Velociraptor might concern both the real Velociraptor and Deinonychus. Number 5. The Fake Mosasaurus you feel like hearing a wild story? You may wonder, how did they clone Mosasaurus? The story goes like this. The scientists found DNA fragments from Mosasaurus fossils while they were testing an iron analyzer. And for Dr. Henry Wu, this find meant he could clone extinct aquatic animals. Well, as far as we know, any trace of prehistoric DNA is useful. Though a remarkable fact is that this Mosasaurus is too big. In Jurassic World 2, it measured 85 feet long whereas the biggest real Mosasaurus barely reached 60 feet. You must also keep in mind that between the movie 1 and 2, this huge animal was locked down without eating for 6 months. How come it's still alive? I can't make sense out of it. Number 6. Won't T-Rex see us if we stand still?
What a lie. According to the University of Oregon, T-Rex had an excellent sight, and it even was 10 times as good as that of any human being and three times as good as that of an eagle. So no matter if you're 3.7 miles away, T-Rex will see you and won't think twice about going for you. Another lie about Tyrannosaurus is that the animal was able to chase a truck at 50 miles per hour, but the truth is that the real dinosaur hardly reached 20 miles per hour. This fact has a hilarious plot twist when you realize that this is the T-Rex that didn't catch up with Bryce Dallas while he was running in heels in Jurassic World. Funny, huh? Finally, did you notice that T-Rex wags its tail? Well, according to scientific data, the tail had to be still so that it counterpoised the huge head. Alrighty then, tail, stop! Stop wagging! That's not scientifically correct! Number 7. The Mystery About Velociraptor Dinosaurs in Jurassic Park 3 If you're an eagle-eyed person, you must have noticed that Velociraptor dinosaurs in the third film are very different from those in the other films. People even speculated that they were another species, like it happened with Deinonychus in the saga or Achillobate. First off, they don't have reptile eyes but bird eyes. Then they have cranial crests, and the male dinosaurs of this genus have protofeathers. Also, their dominance hierarchy is very strict. It's a male group with only one female leader, which is the smartest velociraptor in the saga, and only blue is better. The franchise hasn't said anything about this change, but fans believe it could be about evolution in the wild, or maybe her genome was purer. What we do know is that they almost used the raptor's looks from Jurassic Park 3 and Jurassic World, and our beloved blue was nearly replaced by a raptor called Red. Would you have liked to see that guy Red in action? Number 8. How did they catch T-Rex in Jurassic World 2? In Jurassic World 2, an explosive volcanic eruption was about to devastate Isla Nublar. So Chris Pratt and his fellows got there to save as many dinosaurs as they could. However, things got messy, and after the eruption, the stars had to flee by throwing themselves into the sea through an abyss. So every dinosaur on the island died, and of course, T-Rex popped up somewhere. But how did the animal make it to the ship? That's absurd! Not only is T-Rex alive, but it seems to have teleported itself to the ship. But wait, there are more inaccuracies. Our beloved Blue was hurt earlier, so Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas draw blood from T-Rex to give it to Blue, which happens to be another species. Even though science allows blood transfusions between species, Blue was losing a lot of blood, so she must have died of getting too much blood from another animal. Number 9. A Deceiving Spinosaurus This is another terrible disaster! But let's not blame the franchise. As Jurassic Park 3 was planned, they wanted a greater threat than Tyrannosaurus, and the most obvious option was the largest meat-eating dinosaur, Spinosaurus. Unfortunately, this film was released in 2001, and it didn't know that by 2004, scientists would discover that the real Spinosaurus was totally different. Instead of being a huge, two-legged terrestrial predator, it was more like a four-legged crocodile that preferred to swim and eat fish. How disappointing. This discovery led to check over the fight between Spinosaurus and T-Rex in the film. They concluded that T-Rex would be the overall winner. Now then, Jurassic Park also tried to justify itself by saying that both Spinosaurus and the other dinosaurs in the franchise aren't identical clones, since their DNAs were completed with other animals' DNAs. Regarding Spinosaurus, it carried the genes of Gigantosaurus, a dinosaur similar to T-Rex, and its ultimate predator form would have derived from that animal. If you thought that you'd only see bloopers and scientific mistakes here, you're wrong because… Number 10. It's time to talk about the book. It's a common thing that film adaptations from books aren't identical, but Steven Spielberg's first movie is considerably different from Michael Crichton's novel, which, by the way, is worth exploring. Let's start with Tyrannosaurus. The last thing we know about it is that it was trying to eat the kids who were hidden behind a waterfall in the jungle. However, in previous chapters, the park ranger Robert Muldoon had shot the animal with a tranquilizer. So, T-Rex opportunely falls asleep on the lagoon near the waterfall, probably drowning. Then the real confrontation between Alan Grant and Velociraptor dinosaurs arose in a laboratory. Grant injected highly toxic chemicals into eggs that he made roll down for raptors to eat them and die. But one dinosaur didn't fall into the trap and Grant, being exceptionally lucky and after going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the animal, managed to inject the chemical into it and came out the winner. 
In short, there are so many differences they could deserve an entire video of them. But the last one today is the human characters who died or remained alive in the movie, but share a different fate in the novel. In the book, Dr. Ian Malcolm didn't survive the wounds T-Rex inflicted on him. John Hammond wasn't a kind old man, but a greedy one, who breathed his last at the hands of the consomphonagus. Dr. Henry Wu is killed by the raptors. The lawyer, Donald Gennaro, who is a very charismatic character in the book, managed to survive. Robert Muldoon also survived. The chief engineer, John Arnold, played by Samuel L. Jackson, is killed by the raptors and he just goes missing. However, in the movie, they find his arm. We're grateful to Spielberg for such interesting detail. What a spectacular book! Way gorier than the already quite heavy first movie. Plus, it's a very good read. Do you want more videos like this one? More dinosaur videos? Subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment below. See you next time.